words are carriers for your future. Whatever words you say, they all affect your outcome in life. Today, Kenneth Copeland shares how to speak words of the kingdom of God that will bring life and change every circumstance regarding your future health and prayers. Next, on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. This people's heart is waxed gross. Their eyes are dull of hearing. Their ears they have closed, lest at any time they should see, see what? Verse 19, the word of the kingdom. Remember now, you are a citizen with equal rights of the king in the, in the kingdom. You live there. You have your life and being in him, and he is in you, and he is telling you what to look for. The words of the kingdom. Any time they should see the word of the kingdom with their eyes, hear the word of the kingdom with their ears, and understand the word of the kingdom with their heart, there's the heart, eyes, and ears, and should be converted by the word of the kingdom. In other words, let the word of the kingdom change what you see, change the way you hear it, change the way you think, change the way you speak, and change the way you act. Now, any time by faith you do these things, what should happen? I should heal them. He's the healer. He came to heal. Well, I just don't understand. I come out up and I'm at, I, that's right, you don't understand. But it never was God's fault. And if, and you, you need to go, to the words of the kingdom where Jesus taught about how to act in this kingdom. And the whole thing is about the blessing and how, a, how the anointing of that blessing continues to work and the things you and I can do to shortcut it. What Brother Jesse, I mean, uh, Brother Jerry called blessing blockers. It, it causes your faith to go flat. Uh, Faith worketh by love the way tires work by air. They don't work without air. Faith won't work without love because God is love. Amen? So, you can have a brand new set of tires, but if you don't have any air in them, they won't support the load that they were designed to support. Your, your faith is designed to support all these things and receive and walk and hundredfold and life and and healing and miracles and all these things, but you drain the air out of them. Now, when the problems do come, if Satan can get at you somewhere that you don't understand, what did Jesus say? He comes, if you don't understand the world, he'll steal it from you. So don't jump off on something you don't understand and blame the pastor for it or blame your wife for it. Don't ever blame anybody else, including God, for anything. Because Jesus said, you are justified by your words. You are condemned by your words. You will stand judgment by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. And whatever is in your heart in abundance comes out your mouth. And those are the things that are coming to pass. You, you can't charge it to anybody else. Man, when I finally found out, that's probably the biggest pill I ever swallowed. It sure is nice to have somebody else to blame. But no, it isn't all that nice because if you don't stand up to it, you, it's going to keep happening to you over and 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 over. Now, here's the way the system works. And it works this way on either kingdom because it was, it was made like this. God made the thing this way. It starts out, James said it like this. He said the tongue is the kindling to the whole fire. Now, poor me, you know, most people today don't know what kindling is because all they know is thermostat, but it, you can't just strike a match and stick it to a log. It ain't going to work. Yet it starts off little because it's easy for, to set fire to it. Look, kindling is little, small stuff. 
and it, then a little bit larger, then a little bit larger, and then a little bit larger, and a little bit larger, and a little bit larger. And he said, Jesus said the kingdom of God like that. So what happens now you got a fire out here that's going like this, burning up half the neighborhood. It's going to take some serious investigation by people that know how to investigate to find out what the kindling of that thing was. And the same thing's true over here in spiritual things. Now, let me give you a, 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 a lesson in process. Every living thing was created needing nutrition. God has provided proper and correct nutrition for every living thing. He didn't create it that way, then just leave it hanging out there for you to do the best you could. Now, when, when people or, or ideas or anything else come along and change that, and interfere with the nutrition part of it, then the body is not getting the nutrition that it needs for its life cycle. It's supposed to be changing its, its cells every seven to 11 years or so. And if it's, not being, if it's not getting the kind of nutrition the thing needs, it's just simple fact. If, if your vital organs does, are designed for certain elements of nutrition out of certain plants or, or whatever God put here to do it, and it isn't getting it, each time that life cycle goes around, those cells that are replaced are weaker than the ones before. And you've created, you, you've, you've created an environment for sickness and disease. Now, but let's say here, uh, the, the normal, not, not he's abnormal, but it, you'd call it normal it's just since because that's everybody being this way. And now he's, he's doing this and stuff starts breaking down. Well, what's the first thing that causes? Fear. Uh-oh. Uh. 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 symptoms. Now, the devil got very little to do with this yet, other than the fact that he's trying to keep you from finding out anything different, because you're killing yourself. He don't have to waste much time with you. But now, watch the process. You got a demon watching you. He's been assigned to you, and he's watching you, particularly after you got started coming in here. He's watching you, he can't just run over you anytime he wants to. He does not have the right nor the equipment to do that. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Are you kidding me? He doesn't have that privilege. He'd like to tell you he does, but don't believe it. He's a liar. So, but he's watching you. And you wake up some morning like this. You wake up. Hell, I got the flu. <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, you know how it is, damn for doing, damn for don't, ain't it? Ha ha ha! Now you've been doing that for 50 years too. But now, when the moment that the moment that little low-level devil heard that word come out of that man's mouth, shoom. now he'll get to working on the emotions, and he'll get the he'll get to supercharging them symptoms, brother. I mean, and and then here now the cycle has begun, and what James said, the entire kindling to the fire, and it the. And the, you look at your cross-reference in the King James translation, sets on course, you find that it said, it starts the wheel of nature. 
It starts that event over and over, and the fire is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and some drastic thing happens. Oh, Jesus, help. Oh, Jesus, help. I just don't understand why God let me have the flu. I don't know why God gave me the flu. What did I ever do to God to give me the flu? I guess you're just trying to teach me something. Well, then what happened? You started to wheel over again. This is the reason you and I, none of us in the kingdom of God have any business judging anybody or blaming anybody for anything. No, 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 no. Don't get off out there in that because you cut off the answers to the problem that if you get in faith, repent, go to the kingdom of God, you can find out what started it and change it and stop the thing. Any time there's an accident or, or any manifestation of, of, of the curse in your life or, the, or in your family's life or anything, don't just immediately go to, oh, why, oh, why. No, you're not asking why in faith. You're feeling sorry for yourself. And you're functioning over in grief, whether you realize it or not. You may not seem like you at the time that there's a lot of grief in your life, but the spirit of grief is death's first cousin. And grief will move in after death has manifested itself, whether it is in an actual death or whether it was a something designed to cause death and cause some serious business, serious sickness, serious disease or, or whatever. All of that is designed to die. You understand? That's where that whole world is going. Die, steal, kill, and destroy. Now that, Jesus said, is Satan's process. Not kill, steal, and destroy. Steal, kill, and to destroy. He steals the Word, isn't that what Jesus said? He comes to steal the Word. He steals the Word and kills the blessing, and then he'll destroy you and give God the blame for it. And that, that cycle has been going on over and over and over. <clears throat> well, Brother Copeland just pick me out talking to me. No, I'm talking to me and I'm just sharing it with you. Because <laughs> everybody in here, there, folks, there's not a whole bunch of stuff that Satan's got going for him. He's only got five ways to steal the word. And Jesus laid them all out in the sower, soweth the word. All five things. And he can't dream up anything else. He'd like to but he can't. He's never created anything because there's no truth in him. All he can take is truth and twist it. And so all of us have experienced all the same thing. Now it may have cropped up some different manifestation of it or something, but it all had the same problem and you go right back to the same roots and you go back to the word, to the mouth, faith, Amen. Amen. Are you following me now? Amen. This is why it's so important to hang on to the words of the kingdom. <clears throat> Something happens, Jesus, I mean, your head winds up where your feet were a while ago, and you think, what, 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 oh, God, what, be still. Here again, James said, if you have bitterness, envy, unforgiveness in your heart, any root of bitterness in your heart, lie not against the truth. That's a real, real nice way of saying keep your big blab mouth shut. Don't shoot your mouth off, shut it up. Get back in the words of the kingdom. Think about it, meditate in it, repent before the Lord, open your heart to him and say, sir, I am yours to command and here is my heart. Judge it, I repent if I have ought against any. And I lay this in your hands and when I'm ready, you judge the time. 
I'm asking you, sir, how these things happen. You can't miss it. It's not your fault. I find no fault in you. I find no fault in my family. I find no fault with the government. I find no fault with anybody else. No, 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 Jesus, this is between you and me, and I'm asking you to open up the eyes of my understanding whenever I am ready to hear and to see this thing, and I will correct it in my life. We'll change this because, sir, I'm standing before you today in repentance, and I I'm committing myself by faith to not allow this thing in my life again. Oh, man, you've arrived at some point. Now, God will work with that. Now, how can you say all that? Because he bore our griefs. We ain't got any business grieving. That's right. He bore our sorrows. That word sorrow is translated weakness, pain, and toil. He, he, he bore these things for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's not a matter of who's to blame and who did you wrong. <laughs> if you're going to play that game, then dump it all on the devil. But you can't even do that and grow. No. Somebody with a tongue started that wheel in motion. Because the word says that. And that's the word of the kingdom. Now, what happens when you make that, that decision? Well, look what Jesus said. In the 16th verse here. Blessed are your eyes, for they see what? The word of the kingdom. Blessed are your ears, for they hear what? The word of the kingdom. Your eyes and your ears begin to see through the blessing, hear by the blessing. And then when that happens, then the Lord will say, all right, now here's what you did. All right. In these closing words, let me bring this before you. One must know that the words of the kingdom are about the blessing of Abraham. Now, they, and that is the gospel of the kingdom. You remember Jesus said, the anointing's on me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he said, I must go about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. <clears throat> the gospel of the kingdom is in Galatians 3, 8. The scripture foreseeing. The scripture, Jesus preached the word. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen by faith. Preach the gospel to Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. All will be empowered. Why? Because Jesus opened the door for the heathen to come to him, be born again, and come in to the kingdom of God. That's the gospel of the kingdom. So everything he says has to do with the blessing, its power, its, and, and, and everything that he's functioning in has to do with that. And so when you read it with, with that in mind and you go over and you check out the blessing of Abraham and you follow it and track it and see all the things that it did, you realize you are heir to everything God did for him because you're his seed. Jesus is the seed of Abraham. And we're in him. Amen. So now turn to the 17th chapter of John, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Everybody in this room that is a believer believed on Jesus Christ of Nazareth either directly or indirectly through the words of the men that were in that room. Amen. And Jesus was praying for me. Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. I better get in here and agree with his prayer. Because the words of the kingdom say, if any two of us on earth shall agree as touching anything that we shall ask, it shall be done for us by our Father which is in heaven. That's the words of the kingdom. Well, I know good and well Jesus prayed in faith, so I'm going to get in here and agree. And so I decided I'd do that one day. And I started, and I agreed with him in every verse. 
And I got down to some verses where I couldn't hardly agree. I, I, I couldn't. This is in the very early days. We were still living there in Tulsa. And, and, and I, I'm walking around my room. I started to agree. I started out really excited here. But wait a minute. Ooh. I began to get down here into some stuff that because of my religious thinking, because of my Babylonian ideas that I picked up in the world by hearing somebody else say what, the, what, what uh, uh, religious things were all about, I thought I knew, but I got caught. I, I, I didn't have the faith. I couldn't agree with him. That's bad. You can't agree with Jesus. You better fix that. And I stood right there in that room, and I, I just said, well, Lord, I, I changed my mind right now. I'm going to act on this. And, and, and my, my knees were, literally were, were nervous and shaking because I was about to say some things that I didn't have the guts to say. And I'm standing here in the presence of God agreeing with what Jesus prayed. I got down in here. I have given them your word. And the world hated them because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Oh, yeah, brother, I know Jesus. Yes, amen. I pray not for them that thou should take them out of the world, but that they should keep them from the evil. Oh, Jesus, boy, I agree with that. Yes, 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 yes. They're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify or separate them through your truth. Your word is truth. Now, right there, you can immediately see he's talking about coming out of that kingdom of darkness. Separate them. Sanctify them unto yourself. I didn't know that then, but I know it now. But I went ahead and agreed with it. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also have sent them into the world. Yes, amen. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might be sanctified through the truth. Yes. And he's praying for me. Glory to God. Verse 21. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Oh, yes. Yes that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Yes, oh yes, oh yes, I agree. And the glory which thou gave me, I have given them. I, 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 I don't know about that. I was told never to touch the glory. Well, see, I don't know enough to know what he's talking about. All I know is what I heard somebody else say. I don't even know how any of this matches up. Oh, God help me. So I had to be at least smart enough to say, Jesus, I agree with you. You are going, has got to be right. No matter what is going on in the world, recession, devastation, family trouble, disease, believers have a tool at their side that can change everything. Prayer. God always answers prayer, and He desires that we be people whose prayers get results. How to get your prayers answered 10-day spiritual action plan, the latest lifeline kit from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, is an easy-to-use collection designed to help you learn how to pray with confidence and stop all doubt. It has Kenneth Copeland Ministries' most comprehensive book on the subject of prayer and is filled with practical steps, scriptures to stand on, and thought-provoking devotional questions. This Lifeline Kit also contains a CD of prayers that Kenneth and Gloria Copeland pray just for you, faith and action cards to carry with you or share with others, worship songs to keep your heart and mind focused, and a bonus teaching DVD of strong word-based messages. Your life will change when you know the keys. Renew your mind and discover how to get your prayers answered today. Order the newest volume in our best-selling Lifeline series, How to Get Your Prayers Answered by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland for just $19.99. Whether you're new to prayer or want to power up your quiet time, this will move you from the basics to being a world-changing prayer warrior. For an additional product discount and 48-hour processing, order your Lifeline kit online. For more ministry resources available to you from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. 
When your words begin to line up with God's words and the words of the kingdom of God, that's when they'll begin to bring change and they begin to bring the God kind of life into every situation, into every circumstance. And like Brother Copeland has, has shared with us today, Satan steals the word and he tries to kill the blessing. And when he does, he, he'll do what he can to, to destroy you and give God all the blame for it. And you can break that cycle today by putting God's words in your mouth and saying only what God says about the situation. This is such an important teaching, and I encourage you to watch and listen to this message again and again and again, and you can do that absolutely free by going to our website, kcm.org. Now, to go along with today's teaching, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland would like to give you this little mini book called How You Call It Is How It Will Be by my grandfather, Kenneth Copeland. Once you discover what the Word of God says about your situation, and you start calling your circumstances how you desire for them to come out according to what God's Word has said about it, and according to the leadership of the Spirit, that's when things begin to change around you. And this isn't just for you. You need to begin now to encourage your children and your grandchildren. Get a hold of these things. They can read this, and you build your family on these types of truths, and it will make all the difference, not only for your life, but in theirs as well. So request your mini book or download it absolutely free at kcm.org. This Friday, Kenneth Copeland, along with Stephen Kelly Swisher, will be in Anaheim, California for the Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, April 6th through the 7th. So come out to this meeting, be a part of this big thing, and let God do big things in your life. Make plans to attend. For more information about this meeting and others, you can go to kcm.org. Uh, all the details about the upcoming meetings will be right there for you, and it'll be a blessing to you. So be sure to join us again next Sunday for our special Resurrection Sunday broadcast. You won't want to miss it. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you, God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Remember to request your free book, How You Call It Is How It Will Be by Kenneth Copeland. For faster processing, go to kcm.org and request your free copy. You can receive it as a mini book or download it from our website. For the mini book version, one per household, please offer good for 30 days. The magazine's purpose is to present the Word of God on paper, utilizing the anointing. God has been at work through those pages since the first issue in 1973. A woman in one part of the United States stands on God's Word for a miracle. The story is written and published in another part of the United States. It's mailed to England. Someone in England mails it to a man in Guyana. That man has it in his hands in Brazil the day his baby dies and his baby is raised up. Believers, that's victory. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, Anaheim, California, April 6th and 7th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Celebrate 30 years in Europe at the Europe Victory Campaign, May 10th through 12th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Excel Center in London, UK. The Southwest Believers Convention, July 2nd through 7th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The greatest thing that ever happened to human beings was when Jesus was raised from the dead and became the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. And you need to watch Resurrection Sunday broadcast. Don't miss it. Jesus is Lord. You won't want to miss this special broadcast.